formerly David, now General Lord Richards, former Chief of the Defence Staff, Chief of Staff of NATO's Allied Rapid Reaction Corps at the time of 9-11. Lord Richards joins me now. Thank you for coming on, sir. Obviously, very simple first question. Where were you and what do you recall 20 years ago tomorrow? Good morning. Good morning, Nick, and, and thank you for having me. Um, well, I was, I, I can't match John Stevens' uh, description. He loves a dash of drama, does our John. He does, he does. <laughs> All coppers do. They need it to bring a bit of uh, fizz into their lives. Uh, 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 wash my mouth up. Um, I, I was at a planning meeting, uh, although I was based in Germany in a NATO appointment, I was at a, a UK planning meeting. Um, and uh, like everyone else, I think, we were drawn to the television. And as we went through that morning, uh, a smaller group of us came to, you know, together and said, this is going to change our lives. The world come to, came to know of an organisation, Al-Qaeda and Osama bin Laden. What did you know about him, them and other matters at that time, Lord Richards? Well, we knew a bit because, of course, they'd been active and this is... One of the peculiarities, really, why didn't our political leaders respond more quickly and take this into account? But they'd uh, been responsible for a number of atrocities in the late 90s, um, you know, in, in Kenya and in Aden. Um, so I knew we all knew a bit about them, but it, it certainly wasn't dominating our lives. We never saw uh, at that stage how things were going to pan out over the next 20 years. And how, well, how things, you've almost read my next question, how things have, have things panned out over the next 20 years, Lord Richards? Well, like many soldiers, it's dominated my, dominated my professional life and actually uh, ever since in many respects, because, of course, once you've served in Afghanistan, uh, you feel very committed to it and to the people and to what we were trying to achieve. And I suppose as I look back on it now, it is ironic that President Biden um, evacuated American and other forces uh, uh, with the purpose of, of sort of timing it with the 20th anniversary of 9-11. And yet, as a result of that decision, we are pitched back uh, into an era that could be even worse than the 90s and 2000 that led to 9-11. What are your fears in Afghanistan then? Well, I th fear that um, the Taliban and some extreme jihadist groups are, whatever they like to say, in each other's pocket. And scores uh, will be settled, have to be settled, debts will have to be repaid. And there will be ungoverned space opened up in Afghanistan, which those groups will exploit. And the ability of the Taliban uh, to actually manage them, uh, I think, will be minimal, even though I, I am one of those that think there is certainly a section of the Taliban that would like to try. They've got no love for ISIS-K, for example, which is the ISIS group based in Afghanistan. But there's more than that uh, that will be uh, planning and plotting. And we have, because we've got no boots on the ground anymore, uh, we will be very, it will be very difficult to monitor and then respond to efficiently. Take you back a few years, if I may, sir. 2014, you said, and I quote, I would argue the sacrifice will have been worth it because our streets are safer. We won't have a 9-11, another 9-11, I'm sorry, beyond the fact we're doing the right thing by the people of Afghanistan who don't want the Taliban back. Uh, well, the Taliban, as we know, are back and other elements. Are we closer to another 9-11? I, I think we are. Um, and, uh, you know, I, like many retired generals, give talks to various learned groups. And when I turn to terrorism, I often uh, have had to say, you know, how short our memories are. Um, today, uh, uh, you know, because of the anniversary, we're all reliving that awful moment. And I had no doubt, and you quoted me, and I stand by everything I said in 2014, that what we were doing was very much in our own narrow interests. But it was also morally right uh, that we tried to live up to the promises we'd made uh, to the Afghan people. And I, I should say, there's a lot of misunderstanding about the, the term nation building. People say oh, we went wrong because we were nation building. But you can't just bomb the hell out of people and expect them to support you. We needed a majority of Afghans to 
uh, align with us in our own interests and we had to be seen to be doing good and we did do a lot of good so uh, in many respects i'd argue and i know other people much more learned than me would argue that actually we didn't do enough nation building and particular uh, focus on governance but that that's how i see it and i i think what has happened is both morally and strategically pretty illiterate if i may say so should we have kept in some way, shape or form a, a, a reduced core of military personnel along with the US and or NATO? Well, that's what the plan was. And it was fine until President Trump decided for whatever reason that he wanted to get out um, and set the uh, process in train that has led to it. But President Biden didn't have to go along with it. Um, he could have cancelled it. There was no, I under, as I understand it, great political pressure in the US, nor in this country. We, you know, even after it all happened, you know, although lots of people saying they didn't like it at the time, I don't remember our, our leaders uh, complaining about it. And I think if all of NATO had got together and said to President Biden, this is wrong, we don't think you should do it, and certainly not in the way you are intending, um, then I don't think President Biden could have done it, because it would have been a major break um, within NATO's ranks. As it was, they discussed it at the G7, I accept that, but I don't think it was done with the sort of seriousness and intensity that the situation demanded. So who bears the greater blame, would you say, Lord Richards, or are they equally culpable, former President Trump or President Biden? I'm afraid it's got to be President Biden. He had the opportunity to at least change the uh, parameters um, and to insist that the Taliban uh, did, um, you know, offer up some compromises. There was none uh, in the agreement that was reached. And, but I also think our own political leaders, I, and I, I won't, I'm afraid, describe them as statesmen. I think there is such a shortage today of statesmen and of an understanding of statecraft and geostrategy. But our, our own political leaders, and I mean European political leaders, and the Australians and others, just went along with it. And um, the result is that we are now entering a more dangerous phase after 20 years of hard graft and much sacrifice and many broken promises to the Afghan people. That's why I say it is morally as well as strategically an illiterate decision. A lot of candour about US presidents. Can I ask you your view of the stewardship of Prime Minister Boris Johnson over this? <laughs> now look, I may be retired, Nick, um, but I. Well, it's I worth a, a try, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, he's he was very focused on 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 COVID and all these sort of things. But I would say, and I have said this publicly, uh, he's not helped um, by I, what I think is a rather broken command and control uh, system. We call it command and control, but the National Security Council and Cobra is just not fit for twenty first century conflict, let alone uh, managing, uh, you know, less serious, arguably, but for those involved, hugely serious issues like, uh, you know, the, I don't know, fires and uh, foot and mouth and all these things. The pace of events in this era is so much greater and decisions have to be taken on an informed basis much earlier. And it's just not right. And I'm encouraging those in politics who you know, understand this to uh, ask Mr. Johnson whether he shouldn't review that process and set up something that I would call um, perhaps a, a, a command and communications or a coordination and communications centre that is fit uh, for 21st century life. Last couple of questions. This is never an easy word to put to a military bloke, but was Afghanistan a defeat, Lord Richards? Uh, ultimately, sadly, it was a defeat. And I'm very clear as a result of that, um, with an eye on history, um, as all good soldiers uh, have, that we now need to come to terms with our defeat, put the people of Afghanistan first and foremost, and uh, negotiate um, in a much more active way with people who we would rather not negotiate with, but because of our failings at the strategic level, no, we were never defeated, rather like the American army in Vietnam. We were never defeated at the tactical level, where the soldiers did brilliantly for all those years, but we have been defeated at the strategic level, uh, and we need to come to terms with it. So the price that was paid in personnel, in treasure, as it's called, and of course those still suffering the physical and emotional aftermath, General, was it the price worth paying? 
I think we must look back on it and say yes, because for 20 years, those people who chose to take us up on the offer flourished in Afghanistan. I'm thinking of, of women, children, uh, the health system, the economy grew. There was a buzz about it every time I went there. Yes, there was uh, failures of governance. There's no doubt about that. But it was worth it for 20 years, and it was most of all worth it because we were safer as a result of what we were doing. Um, we've now been pitched back into a dark period, uh, which we somehow got to manage. And the only real answer to your question will be understood, I think, in maybe three to five years, when we see whether or not there has been a genuine turnaround in the Taliban and that we can do business with them. And that as a result of that, the long term solution is better than we today fear. I'm putting it in my diary already to talk to you in three to five years time. Before I let you go, I'm intrigued. I've been looking over the, your shoulder at a picture in your study. Is that the Yalta conference on a photograph behind you? Who, who are those dignitaries around there? Is it the Politburo, General? Who, who am I looking at? <laughs> All right, you got your fun with someone else. Else, well, actually, that is a uh, the that picture is of the US UK combined chiefs of staff in ah. 1944. That's General Marshall ah. uh, Alan Brooks there, and I was very keen when I was CDS to to have a similar meeting, and that's us. I've got it in 2012. So it is actually quite historical. So we we repeated and had such close relationships uh, with our American counterparts. A fitting way to end this interview about events in Manhattan, of course, 20 years on and elsewhere in the United States. Thank you so much for your time.